Nobody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So, but it. So, my name is Tim Abayer. I love the Media Foundation. My job title is Operations Analyst in the Communications Department. And I'm going to talk about um, <coughs> editor service in general and our first results from the last big one we did um, <coughs> in fall of last year. And also, if um, people are like to, uh, also, uh, like to be, uh, talk a bit shop about, I know that many other people who went to uh, editor service was a bit smaller. Some of my colleagues are doing them. But there's some time I actually talk about this uh, a bit too. So um, the basic problem we have is that we talk a lot about the community, right? And it's very important for us at the foundation. We are very much um, uh, there to support the community to um, uh, facilitate this work. So it's pretty much uh, important for us to understand who they are and what problems they have uh, when they work on Wikipedia. And we're also interested in their opinions and on certain issues. Many of them. And the thing is, what happens, usually happens in movements of uh, we are in these discussions. We have to, to talk to the last point about opinions we have made in these discussions. Uh, we have British Pumps and Talk Pages, which is how the projects themselves sort their consensus out. Uh, you can always get personal interest from people you know. And of course, we, the closest we actually get to uh, visualizing the community. <coughs> so this is the co photo from the community last year. And I mean, I'm in the communications department. I'm very totally guilty of this. Um, we use this image uh, to illustrate like our annual reporters so when we want to show people who are our community. And of course, everybody else, we people here are very self-selected, right? I mean, we're not representative. We're much more experienced. Um, um, what you <laughs> yeah, that we are not getting at the whole community when we do this. So um, that's basically the um, setup. I mean, for you, those of you, this is the research track, so you're probably not uh, thinking a lot about why we do surveys or why it's a useful tool. But for us in the foundation, coming from um, these other venues we have, which are important, about values, etc., the kind of stepping back and um, thinking about why we actually do this. And it's like the best approximation we have to. Defining the community is the people who are locked in, who have an account on a project and actually using it. And that's what we target with this survey. We um, um, run these panels, we now then, this was last fall in October, late October, November, inviting people to contribute their opinions and make the product better. So um, that's kind of the motivation for people to participate, and a lot of them participated. Um, and it's really so like it's about giving our users a voice and finding representative demographics and opinions. And we might get to this later, but when the example that's the most striking example on Amazon's mind is of course the gender gap, which really wasn't was kind of for the people who have been in long, longer longer than might remember there was always kind of yeah a notion like yeah it's probably mostly guys, so like it, like other people have to have like it's all these IT students, which is probably not true. Um, but there never was uh, conclusive data until the first big editor survey that was run by the foundation, or the uh, foundation in 2008. And they put this 30% number on the map, and um, people suddenly woke up and say, wow, here's our data. And the foundation, of course, um, promoted this number. And now we have a whole um, area landscape of um, activities or the gender gap. So that's the motivation why we can really change the work on the projects or our own activities <coughs> based on data. So this survey, um, we had uh, 17,000 valid uh, respondents in the most answered question in 17 languages. Actually, um, 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 so I'm not a survey, uh, so I can't do this myself. And um, I'm still not clear to me how many of you really run multilingual surveys. It's kind of hard to find the tools. Uh, you find of lots of bugs that uh, many people find, but not a lot of people find. And uh, so, for example, we determined our choice of survey platform, Qualtrics, simply but because the others didn't really su support um, uh, service in many languages. And even Qualtrics, they didn't have all the language supported that we had. They actually added language interface languages for us. And then there's more things like uh, the Unicode support in Excel is totally broken. But some people in non-English language might be aware of all that kind of stuff. So you get in mind that it's really, really quite a multilingual movement. And so it was a serious, <coughs> when in April 2011, December 2011, 
and in November 2012. So the previous one I was talking about, the Unimail Server 2008, was uh, conducted by an internal research, external research institute. And in this survey, we uh, basically, the first time we just repeated the part of the previous questionnaire because we're interested in trends. And the second half, we were interested in um, what the community thinks about our work, right? So are they unhappy, happy, whatever? What do you think that we could do? What, which parts of our work do I find especially important or, or are they not so happy with? So this is kind of for our needs. And that's also the most of what I'm going to show you now. It's kind of a, a utilitarian for really informing our work. Um, I'm not going to talk so much about the first half. Uh, first is because um, we're not done analyzing everything, although it's will come out soon too. Um, the other is that, uh, maybe talk about this later. Uh, it's really actually hard to compare different surveys. And you see there's also a gender gap when you see these people talking, for example, that the, uh, oh, the, Wikipedia, the generation of Wikipedia has fallen from 13% in 2010 to 9% in 2011. I mean, and this, last week I saw this by a uh, very reputable uh, good researcher on a uh, very large journal blog. And how does they just read uh, the gender ratio in different surveys without recognizing that there were very different projects. So I mean, again, we had 17 different language Wikipedias or languages. And other surveys have a different choice of language. And that really influences your outcome, right, if you add them up. I mean, we have a lot of different countries. We had, in the last one, I think India had 3%. And the U.S. had um, 15% or something, <coughs> so it varies widely. And you really need to, if you compare, you really need to uh, break it down a bit, so it gets a bit more complicated. That's what we're going to do soon. Open up cost. Um, yeah, I'm going to say a bit more about this later in time. And so the outcome, we were really happy with it. <coughs> we asked people, are the, is the foundation going in the right direction? And it's a pretty large majority saying that we do. And only a few people say that something's going wrong or the foundation needs to change course. And of course, yeah, this is the research track, so we're kind of wondering what this really mean. And um, there's a caveat here, right, that the, um, it's also a large portion saying, actually, I don't know. And that's kind of a trend we found that, of course, we are 17,000 people. Again, this is just how. We are not representative, I mean, probably everybody here knows about the foundation. The average editor with uh, 10, 20 editors per month maybe doesn't necessarily know about what the foundation is. So, I mean, you can see the footer on the Wikipedia and let's say it's a Wikimedia product. That's about all. <coughs> and that's the trend of many questions that we say these don't know. And, um, yeah. Um, as you all can say, it's, it's a nice, it's 11,000 people, so we have really nice. Um, more confident in the world. And it's also something that one has to be aware of, right? Because many people run very small editors, so with small sample sizes, like 1,500. And that's sometimes that's cool because you have small groups, small populations, but I mean, um, so or people who participate in some small editor fund, for example, or in a, in a grants process. I mean, a lot of my colleagues are doing this stuff, and it's fun, but if you want to know what the whole English Wikipedia thinks about something, it's just not enough to have um, 50 or 100 people, right? Um, if you used to do uh, calculate statistics, you know that. I think it's worth repeating. Yeah, so we, I know this is a bit um, because we're wondering if uh, people who have been uh, in the post for a long time are happier or unhappier. And it's actually interesting that the unsure number is not so much changing, but. Um, the support is, is dropping a bit, but uh, even, the, even the oldest guys, people uh, who have been happy and started country before 2005, have um, um, <coughs> in half times more of, of them have a positive opinion than uh, thinking that we're doing wrong. We also asked them, so this is part of my way, I mean, this is a different. Um, community, but we also ask them, do people feel we are part of the community? And most of them, as you can see, it's a, it's a Likert scale. I didn't really the average, but um, the, um, most of people actually think agree with that statement. Although there's, again, a large part of people who are unsure and, um, yep. Yeah. And of course, foundations that are 
could uh, participate too in the survey, although only when they're locked into their accounts on the wikis. Can I actually ask if anybody participated in the survey? <coughs> find the base population, it's kind of hard, I mean, it's basically all the people who were logged into their accounts when, during, when the survey run, which was up to two weeks in, in vain. And um, we actually don't know that more precisely, so um, it's kind of an active added number in each language project. We're kind of aiming at 25% uh, to get a good um, satisfaction, because later we want to break it down by language, and still remain statistically significant. And, but it also means that sometimes we went beyond 100%. So the Arabic Wikipedians were really eager to participate. So we actually had more participants in the survey than um, active editors by the definition we use, which is five or more editors per month. Okay, so um, that's our next one. We uh, <coughs> asked them how much they support English Wikipedia, feel the foundation supports English Wikipedia. And surprisingly, a lot of them think it's um, fine. It drops a bit. We asked about Wikimedia Commons, or uh, image repository, but still, uh, most of them think it's pretty positive. We asked about other language Wikipedias, and as you may know, we put a lot of effort into uh, um, internationalization and localization. And still, of course, you see a bit, um, some people don't feel it's neglected, but um, um, I less enthusiastic about this. Again, this totally depends on the language choice we have, right? I mean, the fact is done later. And in the next question, um, we asked about non uh, Wikipedia products. That's why people are actually more skeptical. So, like, generic report, etc. Uh, but you have to remember that December was only about Wikipedians, and also, I forgot to mention, we also in included comments. Sure. In the, other, in the previous slide, there's other languages you not everybody not English? Yes. Uh, so this was about this is, um, this is English and this is other languages. Okay. Then we asked about um, things, activity ideas we do and um, asked them whether they are aware that we do this, whether they like the fact that we're doing this, and whether they thought we have done a good job with that. I have to break down a bit so I think we did definitions, but we have uh, a lot of people, of course, agreeing that the technological support, running the site, etc., improving the software. Um, I mean, 80%. You can ask, um, shouldn't everybody be aware? But actually, no. <laughs> I mean, could could be also by Google, right? Who knows who does? And um, also, most people did thought it was we doing a good job on this. Um, this is of course condensed. Like I mean, it goes from one to four. So if you imagine that's actually we're still in the positive half. Although tech and legal are among the most popular ones. We also ask um, about activities in the Global South, the education program, um, grants activities, so we give out money to other organizations to do projects or to individuals, uh, mobile support, our work on the mobile interface of Wikipedia. And the work is kind of, uh, yeah, it's probably, was probably a bit, um, a bit different. And so it's kind of the things we do directly interacting with editors, like, um, um, about the media epic advocacy and um, yeah, like um, well, that's a great effect. We also ask the things we we, wish we should not be involved, and it's one, the opposite, right? Tech and legal are the only two percent thing that we shouldn't do that, and um, other things which um and less core. So by the way, I don't know if you're following the foundation, but we. So that we actually had this definition of core and non-core activities last fall, and that pretty much uh, maps this distinction. Okay, then we also were interested in what people want us to do that we are maybe not doing or should continue doing. And I um, have um, to break this down. So we asked about support for new editors, um, about uh, editor retention, meaning people are existing editors. Uh, we asked about easy editing, right? Um, improving the interface, which is a big topic right now. Um, support to increase uh, agenda gap work, increasing the ratio of female editors. And um, kind of the mirror of the previous support question, if, if people want more, 
so far for non-English Wikipedias that had a pretty high risk, um, importance rate. Sure. And um, then again, mobile, and again, legal defense gets a very high support rate. And we had uh, support for the education program, local organizations, we can get chapters, support from them. And we have a legal fund for different administrators against legal threat. Yeah, so, and that's good. Uh, just having one thing here that um, people think about things that you think are in inappropriate for the foundation getting aged, and we have um, actually uh, some kind of opposition against uh, the gender gap activities. It's not a lot, but it's 18%. Just a small minority, but it's kind of um, uh, distinguished from the others. Um, so this is more like advertising based account. Is that a full report? But we also had a writing question where we had people um, who didn't see their priorities or wishes as listed <coughs> would um, tell us in a, in a pre com response. So we got a lot of I don't know if you can have a It's more like to give an impression, but um, it's very very different. Right? There's a lot of um, um, we need to these stupid deletion administrators, etc. Things you can't do, and there's concrete things we actually can do. And we actually in, uh, we analyzed these. Um, I mean, we translated them with Google Translate and coded them in various different areas. So I don't have time to present this, but it's a very interesting uh, analysis. And in the other part, just to segue into that, in the uh, first half, where we just asked about people's editing experience, we also had one new question asking. People about their motivation. And I don't know if you've all the research, but there's a lot, a lot of people who, uh, papers who um, study motivation to edit Wikipedia. And but I think what's interesting here is that we, a, we had a lot of responses, 8,000 uh, people expressing in their own words. So a lot of papers just present them um, predefined options um, and have the check boxes. And this is really people expressing it in, in their own words. And we also yeah, and actually Cortex gives you the transfer on each transfer, so it was uh, 41 days cumulatively in the effort of the law by 8,000 people. <coughs> so it's really interesting, there's something we also had as analysts, which were consultants, and they uh, by various kind of motivations. So, this really so again, it's not uh, just, uh, and I also meant to mention, <coughs> uh, by nature, uh, that's agenda that we always knew that there had some kind of participation bias, but I mean, when the gender gap uh, first broke in uh, January of 2011, there was various people saying, well, the study, for example, they had less than 50%, how many percent of we had? About 40%. Yeah, 40%. Under 40%. Yeah. <clears throat> so we kind of knew that something was underrepresented here, right? And, um, and it turns out that women are not only less likely to edit Wikipedia, but also to participate in online surveys. So let's cue the result a bit. And uh, Aaron Market just published a paper which I recommend everybody read who's doing at the surveys where they found a method to correct that. And so we actually found that the uh, estimate from back then, from 2008, I said, should have been 16% instead of 13%. So it's not a big deal. It's not saying that there's no gender gap. There's still a really huge gender gap, and it's, it's not actually changing the motivation, but it's worth being aware of. Okay, and the thing is, you need a, uh, another survey to compare it with. It's um, uh, what we might be looking at if we. So we didn't actually find a possibility of possibility to apply to this survey. But um, yeah, so that's almost it. Um, because I didn't do this alone, right? I mean, I didn't even design like two questions at all. Thing and there was some other people, and the people uh, analysis. Just a popular readable um, um, task plan. I don't know what we actually have done here back. <laughs> so, also because it's really important for us to review the questionnaire, for example, or the translation that we're doing. We have the commercial translation company, but also we review them by happy group by community translators because we always find that. Commercial translations, so I always get the Wikimedia stuff wrong. But, yeah, we give it um, expressions for Wikipedia specific stuff. And then we actually get um, complaints about um, the talk about Wikipedia. Okay, so that's the event bank about the survey. And then that's, um, and um, 
So when you last see top line, would you see it's just percentages for each question <coughs> and more analysis on um, the foundation score? <coughs> And also, like in the last service, we're going to release an um, anonymous data set for other people to use. So um, I probably get to request for people who want to use for their own research. And I would love it if um, other people in the audience maybe um, are interested in, in doing something with that. That's the that's the point about the free form response I was talking about. So the, the thing is it's really limited. We can just check these boxes, right? And uh, what we try with these write in responses is to go beyond it and have um, uh, people say qualitatively instead of ticking boxes what they want and and like I said it's actually very um, it's a lot of work analyzing this. And also that's a general mark I want to make about surveys. Uh, people love these write in responses, right? Because they're not bound by these restrictions. But it's actually really a lot of work to analyze them and in, so past servers, we didn't really do this. I mean, we had like a wordle, you know, these word clouds, which is kind of interesting. And um, I really would like to have a look at these uh, quality panels we are going to publish about these. So. Can you give information by the according to these or countries somehow? Are we storing information about the appearers? I, I, I don't remember if we had to mention well, from when we did the questionnaire, but can you divide information later on according to the country? For example, yeah, we asked we, about we the country. Could use, we could mm -hmm. use uh, this kind of information mm -hmm. uh, in our own chapter. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's asking if we're storing in the country with the um, with the responses, we didn't so the IP addresses, which was kind of a big decision, right? Because uh, there's a lot of information that people like to analyze, but we kind of talk to our legal team and that we don't really need it and for privacy. But we asked about people's country, and you can actually totally break this down. And somebody actually did this with the uh, last survey, Fancy, because he hasn't published it yet, unfortunately. But yeah, he looked at our one question, breaking it down by um, country. But but we share the information. Yeah, that's in the anonymous data set. Ah. And you can actually look at previous year's data set. That's what Pencil did. So, and we had, this, yeah, we had this discussion about the performance of different parts of the movement, right? And some chapters objected that it was only meaningful if we break it down to one country. So, if you want, you can totally do that. Um, programs have initiated about the previous database. And how serious does the foundation take this service? Well, it informs. I mean, it's not a vote about the next program, right? So um, that's actually, but it certainly uh, informs. I mean, the senior management have been reading it and are very interested yeah, in that. I mean, so it, it's not a vote on the budget. That's so not what it is. Wasn't the gender gap discovered by the 2008 survey? Yeah, that's what I was kind of an so earlier. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. That's been an enormous amount of energy and effort directed to their resource accommodation. Have you thought about uh, serving more tailored to sister projects uh, users? Because every time you know you just say that uh, you ask to Wikipedia users uh, which was the impact of their foundation uh, or sister project, and you didn't ask the sister project users about that. Mm -hmm. And the number actually are very small, so even even that maybe didn't show. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been not doing a lot of uh, service on this approach. I mean, I wanted to give a credit for at least including comments this time, which we didn't do last time, so it's a small set. Um, the other thing is, of course, it's small, right? And um, um, you can do it, and, but I mean, it's also, you have to tailor the, um, the questionnaire, right? For, for comments users, we excluded a lot of the first part about editing, right? 
So it's also resources, right? I mean, and uh, designing question is design about takes time. Did you did you break down the uh, priorities responses um, by gender? I'd be really interested to know if all the people who said that bringing in more female editors wasn't important were all men. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Steve was interested if uh, there's a. Uh, difference in gender, in the opinion, on the priority uh, increasing female editors, and check it. Yeah, but of course I thought about the same. It will be interesting to see. I'm mean, totally, um, going to mark on that.